Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. Today we have a special video in store. We're gonna be vlogging our trip to the beach. We're gonna go to a different beach than we normally go to. And uh, along the way, we're gonna make a stop on the way there and film a mini golf course. So that'll be fun. And hopefully on the way home also we'll film and those will be on separate videos. But we thought we'd be cool to uh, vlog our trip to the beach and show you what else we're gonna do should uh, see some cool sightseeing things while we're there. We're headed to Nags Head, so I'll show you uh, our approximate ETA, probably be a little later than this because we're gonna be stopping to play mini golf. So there's our GPS, as you can see, uh, we've got 296 miles to go. So we got a long trip ahead of us, but uh, looking forward to this uh, little four day weekend trip. And our first stop here is at Sheets, so we can get some gas. All right, folks, as you can see, we're all gassed up. We got 540 miles distance to empty. And our first stop will be at Caps Entertainment is what they're called for our first round of mini golf. So we got about two hours to get there. So we'll touch base with you again as we get closer to our destination number one. I almost forgot about our little pit stop here to get some fuel for the road as we stop in here at Starbucks to get a coffee. Hey folks, so I have my coffee now. I always get a mocha at Starbucks. Looking forward to this drink as we hit on the, on the road. And Hannah and Corey didn't want one yet. Maybe they'll get one later. Prime. She's drinking a Prime for now and Hannah's got her snack. So we're ready to hit the road. See you soon. Okay, folks, we're about an hour away. I wanted to show this exit. This exit right here is known as Tobacco Road Exit. You turn right, you go to UNC Chapel Hill. You turn left, you go to Duke University. A lot of people in the basketball world know it as Chapel Hill. So just wanted to touch base and show you where we were. About an hour away from Caps Entertainment. See you soon. Okay, folks, we've arrived at Caps Entertainment with the Retro Blacklight Mini Golf and the Pirate Mini Golf. Let's check this place out. Hey, folks, today we are at Caps Entertainment, which has lots of cool stuff to do here, but we're going to specifically play the Mini Golf and this is gonna be our first blacklight retro course we're playing today. Lots of cool theming here and uh, looks like a really fun course. This is our first blacklight course we've ever played on our channel. So hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll throw a little bit of juggling in too as my new tradition here. So the second nine holes are actually a pirate themed course. So stay tuned for the second nine also. And if you're new to our channel and you've never seen any of our videos before, Hannah, what should they do? Like and subscribe. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy this video and let us know in the comments below what you thought. All right, Hannah's turn on the Elvis hole, hole number six. Ooh. Oh, she Elvis. got a hole in one hole on in one. Elvis. An yeah. Elvis hole in one. I bet you've never seen that before on YouTube. <laughs> Good job, babe. All right, folks, here's the next area. Oh, this is awesome. It's E.T. You got E.T. He's actually, that is an awesome painting. And he's actually right in the middle of the hole. That's awesome. A really cool club over here. This is just a really cool course. And next, we got an astronaut and Superman to finish off our holes. Okay, folks, we're getting ready to enter the back nine here, which is also black light. And this is a pirate themed black light course. And this is the introduction video that talks all about it. Oh, 
This should be fun, folks. Looking forward to this course. And here's the entrance to the pirate adventure. Got a Johnny Depp look like character as we enter the pirate themed course. This is cool. Hey folks, we just finished our round of mini golf. That was an absolutely awesome course. We played a blacklight course in Wilson and uh, looking forward to getting that video up on our channel very soon. So uh, we're back on the road now, headed towards Nags Head and the Outer Banks. So looking forward to getting there. It looks like just a little after seven tonight. Just wanted to give a quick update on our trip, on our road trip. I'll show you where we have to go here in just a second. As you can see, our ETA shows just a little after seven. We got about an hour and 56 minutes left of driving to go. So we'll touch base with you again as we get closer to our destination. This is what it looks like outside right now, just kind of overcast. Temperature's around 60 degrees today, but it's going to be getting a little colder, I think, this weekend. So, talk to you again soon. Folks, the checkered flag means we've made it to our destination. And that is our unit right there. We are finally at the beach, folks. All right, folks, we made it to our place. This is an old-timey throwback hotel. It's all one floor, and we park right in front of our units. So this should be a really fun weekend to check things out. So it's dark now, so we'll and get... And back here. And Corey moved to the back for the rest of our trip. So we finally made it. It's almost 8 o'clock, and we're going to go check out the place. All right, folks, this is where we're staying. It's Corey's dad staying with us. This is our place, I think, number 29. Got a nice little three-bedroom cottage. And the ocean is right over there behind that building. Just steps from the ocean. Okay, folks, here's our room. It's actually more like an apartment than a room. We have some nice leather furniture. Hannah's got her new Squishmallow. And we have a dining table and a kitchen. A nice refrigerator. And then we'll go and show you the bedrooms. All right, and then we've got three bedrooms here. One there, one here, a little storage area. Got a little bathroom and shower. And then a third bedroom right here. And Hannah will be able to sleep in the bedroom with me and Corey in this room. It's really cool. Good morning, folks. We made it to the morning here at the Cavalier Inn. This is our retro hotel that we're staying at. And we got daylight. Yay. I want to walk around the front here and show you what the entrance to this hotel looks like. Folks, this is the entrance to the Cavalier by the sea the offices and then it's like a u-shaped building with all one story rooms really throwback to the old style hotels by the ocean this is the main drag here right off the ocean i'm gonna take you to the little walkway so you can see how close we are to the water okay folks this is back of our units. You can see our van is up there. I'm going to come over here and I believe I can get to the ocean between these two buildings right here. Come up here and yes. many hotels like this anymore. The door opens right up to the 
position. Really cool. Gonna come over here and walk down to this. That's not bad. Like a little ramp down to the sand. from the beach of the place we're staying. Again, very cool. You don't see this very often anymore where the hotel leads right out to the beach. Very old school hotel. It's been here for many, many years. You can check out the link below in the description if you want to see more about this Cavalier Inn. Cavalier by the Sea is what it's officially called. Hey folks, now we are headed to our first place and we have Corey's dad Jimmy here with us and we're going to be heading to the North Carolina Aquarium and Hannah also wants to check out the Lost Colony and all of that is in Mantio. So. And I learned about it in school. Yes, yeah, she's learned about the Lost Colony in school so she's really excited about seeing that. So we'll take you along with us and see what it's like. Hey folks, our next stop is at the Fort Raleigh National Historic Site. Hannah wanted to see the Lost Colony area here in Mantio, North Carolina. And she's learned about that in her history class, so we're going to check that out next. Alright folks, here we are. We're going to walk down the trail to the Lost Colony. It's a little windy outside today. Not very warm. This is the little hut here at the start of the walking trail. This is part of the National Park Service. And right here is some signage about the Lost Colony. The year was 1587, 20 years before J Jamestown. Here on Roanoke Island, a great moment in history occurred when 116 men, women, and children planted the roots of the English society on the shore at Fort Raleigh. This is really interesting check it out. There may have some wildlife out here folks. We saw a fox cross here but I didn't catch it on camera. Let's see what else we run into since there's not a lot of people out here. All right folks we're headed down here to the end of the trail. History comes alive. Here's a picture of Andy Griffith portraying Sir Walter Raleigh in 1953 and President Franklin Roosevelt attended the Lost Colony in 1937. Pretty neat history here. This is the entrance to the theater during the summer they have plays and things here obviously in the off season they're not going to have that but it's really neat. Dressing rooms for the theater Some wild looking trees here right on the water. They do some different things. Folks, this is awesome. This is what the theater looks like here right on the water. They have plays here in the summer when the warmer months. This is really cool. I'm going to go check out the theater here. Go down the steps. Restricted area. Guess they're not going to let me go out on the 
stage. We'll have to come back here in the summer months when they have a play. But that would be awesome. Here's a little map that shows the whole area here. The theater we were just at and parking in Fort Raleigh. Pretty cool. All right, folks, that was fun visiting the Lost Colony and Fort Raleigh historic site. Now we are headed to the North Carolina Aquarium, which is only four minutes away. Hey folks, so today we're at the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island. Gotta check out what this place looks like. Okay folks, we're here going at the entrance. We're right here off of the water. And Hannah and Corey are gonna enter the doors here. This is really cool. This is wild. You can see me. There's a giant turtle. A virtual turtle is at our feet. That is pretty wild. I don't see him around here anywhere. Bye, turtle. This is the megalodon shark. As they lived millions of years ago. Look how big it is compared to a scuba diver. Yeah. The scuba diver is tiny. That was a big old shark, that's for sure. Cool fish here in this first aquarium. That's an interesting fish. Appears to be a long nosed gar. Here's a little video about the long-nosed gar. Over here we have some alligators, an albino alligator nonetheless. Check him out. That's a very interesting alligator. Are you checking us out, buddy? His teeth are a little crooked. I think he needs an orthodontist. This stingray is wanting to say hi to us, I think. They're fascinating looking creatures, that's for sure. That's exactly what the one was doing when I stepped on him. He was sitting in the bottom of the bush and, and his stinger went into my foot and almost came out the other side. Yeah. Okay, folks, next we have what's called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Giant tank, sharks, and many other fish. fish down here too. There's a view of the aquarium at the back. The sharks. And this is the entrance to the gift shop. Spot a shark USA. I got some jellyfish like lamps hanging from the ceiling. Pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. And then we have the gift shop. See the sharks in the 
Yeah, no, not All right, we had a good time at the aquarium. Each of us got a little shirt, or Hannah got some cool little things at the gift shop as well. So she's gonna enjoy those, including what was that slime? Um, hmm? Putty. Putty. That should be fun. All right, so we're headed out, exiting the aquarium. Had a good time here. Hope you enjoy our footage and content. Hey folks, tonight we are eating at Captain George's Seafood Restaurant. This is an awesome buffet place. They have three of these, one at Myrtle Beach here at Nags Head and another one up in, I think, Virginia Beach. Looking forward to eating here tonight. This is an awesome, awesome food. We just finished our meal here at Captain George's and we're going to need a wheelbarrow to get back to our place. It was very good. Okay folks, we are arriving at Jockey's Ridge State Park. This is the largest natural sand dunes on the east coast of the United States here in the Outer Banks and Nags Head. We're gonna try to see if we can go up here and catch the sun as it's setting, but we're not real sure the sun will be out, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. So here's the parking area for Jockey's Ridge. Just a smattering of a few cars. It'll be interesting to see what we see. Hey folks, we're gonna try to head up here. It says the ridge area closes at 5.45, so we gotta get here quick. See if we can catch the sun going down. This is what it looks like. You gotta climb up the sand to get to the ridge. Okay, folks, we've turned the corner here at Jockey's Ridge, and we gotta try to climb the ridge. See if we can get up high to see a good sunset. Probably hear me breathing heavy. This is a steep hill to climb. Hey folks, we're having fun out here. It's a little chilly. The wind chill's in the mid 30s. So we got our hats on trying to stay warm. You can see the sound behind us and the sun setting. Pretty cool view up here tonight. Here at the end of the day on Saturday, President's Day weekend. Hope you enjoy our video and our content from our trip this weekend. Thanks everyone. I'll try to take another clip as the sun goes down, but we can't stay here too long because they close at six tonight. <laughs> hey everyone, here we are at Jockey's Ridge. Thought we'd take one more clip here with the sun kind of setting behind us. Getting a semi sunset, looks pretty cool here from the top of Jockey's Ridge. Hope you guys enjoy this view. It's uh, pretty cool, even though it's a little chilly up here, but. A lot of fun to come up and get to see a really cool sunset. Thanks everyone. 
Folks, here's a cool little thing Hannah did. She's our artiste. If you can't read it, it says NC Family of Three YT for YouTube. Cool. Good job, Hannah. Awesome. NC Family of Three YT. Okay, folks, we're going to start heading back to our car now. I'm going to try to video so you can show how far a walk it was to get up here to get back to our cars. All right, here we go. Time to walk back to the car. We would stay up here longer, but it closes at 545 and we're just a few minutes from that. So got to walk down this little slope here. This one's a little steeper. Thankfully, the sand is really thick right here. I'm not going fast. Well, come on. Why are you going so slow? Because I'm scared. Oh, it's not scary. It's just sand. The worst thing will happen is like you're at the beach and you fell in the sand. This is the funnest part. You can just run because there's no worry about falling. See? There she comes. Oh, look at little Miss Hannah with energy now. Or maybe she's just cold and trying to run back to the car. Running is not what I'll be doing. Huh? Can I put my knees in the sand? Can you put your knees in the sand? Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Because it's cool. Because I can't do that on, on an old floor. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> and now we get to go to the ER. Huh? <laughs> now I've got sand in my boots. Great. i got to bring some home with this. Show it to Papa. Huh? Show it to Papa. Show it to Papa. Yeah. Show him the ER trip. This does not feel very pleasant. <laughs> you were Having sand all down your pants. Not just my pants, my shoes. But it's okay, I'm feeling. <laughs> oh no, it's dark. I have to walk through the dark trees. I hope there's no bears in these trees. <laughs> that was good to walk off that huge meal we had earlier. And we made it out to the parking. Woohoo! Yep. All right, folks, we've made it to Sunday morning. We're gonna have breakfast here at the Dean's restaurant. This looks like a neat place. This is just before the bridge at the Sound area here in Nags Head. This is on the southern end of Nags Head. It's a shame there's a Jurassic putt right across the street. 
first close for the season. Boo. These places should be open. All right, folks, this is what it looks like inside the Dunes restaurant for breakfast. Tori's got some grits and eggs and a giant biscuit. Ann's got some hot cakes. Papa got some shrimp and grits, and I've got my traditional French toast and eggs. Looking forward to a good breakfast. This is a cool little beach themed breakfast place. Folks, we just wanted to show you this view from the balcony at our hotel and give you a few funny faces while we do it. Hope you enjoy. Folks, this is the view from our hotel. Up on the, we have an upper observance deck. It's pretty cool. This is what it looks like from up here. All right, folks, today we are visiting a cool little hidden monument at the Outer Banks Visitor Center up in the Kill Devil Hills area around Nags Head. This is called Monument to a Century of Flight. It was dedicated in 2003. Really cool monument about flight since this is the birthplace of flight. flight. So let's check it out. All right, folks, this is a cool little path that we take and some steps to get to the monument of the Century of Flight. Wow, this is really awesome. Little thing about somebody who donated towards the monument. We'll come around here and take a look at everything. Y'all, this is so cool. It starts out and goes all the way around the circle. It starts in 1903 and ends over here in the 19, uh, late 1900s into 2000. This is just such an awesome display, folks. Hope you enjoy this video with a lot of the history of space. I'm gonna back out a little bit so you can see. There's a little thing here that looks kind of like the earth with all the different types of flight around it on the bottom. This is really cool. All right, folks, hope you enjoy this video on the monument to a century in flight. Everything from airplanes to spacecraft, everything you can imagine is encapsulated in this monument. And it's really crazy that it's not really talked much about or anywhere around here. And the, even the, the signs that point to this just call it the Outer Banks Visitor Center. And then when you get in here, you see a sign about the Monument of Flight. So kind of a hidden gem here in the Outer Banks. If you get a chance to visit it, definitely try it out. And uh, you could spend some time here just reading all of these monuments. So I hope you enjoy this video and this information and uh, on our as we continue our trip here in the Outer Banks. Thanks, everyone. All right, folks, this is the ramp we came up to get to it. Just wanted to note too, that the monument to Century of Flight is not in any way related to the Wilbur and Orville Wright Flight Museum that we're gonna visit as well. It's a little further down, about seven miles from here. Here's a cool little thing at the end about John McGee Jr. He was a 19 year old American serving with the Royal Canadian Air Force in Britain. And he wrote this in 1941. He was killed that December in a Spitfire over England. There's a time capsule that is associated with this that says down at the bottom, that's really cool. It's a message to the people of 2103. They're supposed to open it in December of 2103. That is cool. Okay, folks, this is the Wright Brothers Visitor Center, and you can see the historical markers from the first flight ever recorded in America. We'll go up there and check out that monument off in the distance as well. This is an awesome place, folks. And here they have the Wright Brothers Visitor Center, museum flight room and museum store. 
part of the National Park Service, U.S. Department of the Interior. Let's come in here and check it out. Anna and Corey are walking ahead of me. This is cool, shows you a little bit of the what's here and what you can do at the Wright Brothers Memorial. And here is a three-dimensional map. There's a sculpture commemorating the December 17th, 1903 flight. And there's the first flight airstrip. And there's boulders that mark the actual flight. We are in the visitor center. Pretty cool little map. Down here it gives you more information about what you can do here. We'll check out the flight room in a minute and the actual plane. Full size 1903 reproduction. Over here on the wall I have a picture from the first flight. And down here, got a lot about the history. We'll check this out in just a minute. Folks, this is really cool. They show you the takeoff spot for the first floor, four flights. The brothers' quarters and hangar are also there as reproductions. So you can see the first one flew about 120 feet in 12 seconds. Then he went. 175 feet in 12 seconds, and then number three was 200 feet in 15 seconds, and then number four is all the way down here. 852 feet in 59 seconds. Fourth and final flight at 12 p.m. And here is called the flight room, and they have a a real thing, a reproduction of the plane. This is cool. I'm just going to walk around it so you can really see everything. Solving the problems of the flight. Problem number one was lift. There's a little chart talking about the problem. Okay, folks, we're going to go outside and see the flight line and monuments. So I'm going to follow Hannah and Corey out here and check out the details here. This is really cool. They have stones showing each of the four times they flew. So we'll go out here and check it out. This is around the other side of the building here. This is really cool. They have it set up what it looked like. They actually had storage for the pieces of the plane that they were working on. It looks like those were sleeping quarters up there. Very primitive, over a hundred years ago. Here's a little more information about their home away from home. Windy conditions made tent life difficult. The brothers moved into the hangar workshop in 1902, but it made for cramped quarters. So this is what they looked like. This is the hangar. A little commemoration info there and then over here they've got the first flights info it's a cold and windy morning 
December 17, 1903. All right, here's the getting off the ground. The launch rail and dolly. The soft sand was not a good runway. The brothers built a 60-foot wooden rail with metal stripping to provide a hard and smooth surface for takeoff. A dolly of wood and bicycle hubs was placed on the rail to hold the flyer above the sand as it accelerated toward liftoff. Took them four years of scientific research and rigorous experimentation. And with their 1903 flyer on the rail, the rights are set to fly. So this wasn't something that they just came out here one day and did it. It took a lot of hard work and experimentation to figure this out. So here's the actual path right here. This is really cool. And they have boulders and stones marking everything. First successful flight of an airplane was made from this spot by Orville Wright in a machine designed and built by Wilbur and Orville Wright. So I'm gonna walk down here. Oh, there's a plane coming in. That's cool. There's actually a strip right there. We can see a plane land. At the same time we're checking out the flight memorial. Here it comes. That was a special treat. We didn't expect that to get to see a plane actually land. And the so, pilot of, of the first one was Orville. Yep. He was the pilot of all of them, I think. So let's go to the next one. This was where the first flight landed. Oh, I can see the next one's Wilbur. Oh, it was. Okay, they changed pilots on a couple of them. End of the second flight. This one was about... 175 feet. All right, let's go to the third one. And Orville was the pilot of this one. This was about 200 feet. And then just so you can see how far it is, we're gonna walk all the way down to the end. Okay, folks, I'm gonna keep walking here so we can go all the way down to the fourth stone. All right, folks, I sped up to the end here, end of the fourth flight. The pilot was Wilbur. He went 852 feet and 59 seconds. That's the fourth stone to mark. And there's all the way back to the first stones. And then the memorial is up on top of the hill. We'll go up there and check that out too in just a few minutes. This is really cool though. Okay, folks, we are coming up here on the memorial, and I'm gonna drive around it and see if we can go up closer to it. I think we can. All right, folks, we're gonna come up here to, there's a playground with a replica of Orville and Wilville Wright's plane. We're going to come up here and check that out, and that should be cool. This should be pretty cool. This statue, I mean, this, yeah, I guess they call this a sculpture. Sculpture is what they call this. But it's a sculpture you can play on. So cool. And they have the replica of the rail that they used here. And the guys back here that were helping out with the flight. And the guy that was taking pictures is back here too. And he's gonna try to walk on the rail. Let's see what it says on his hat. U.S. Life Saving Service. 
That's pretty cool. I wonder if this is the actual height of these guys. That guy over there is on his bare feet. This little thing shows you who all the people were. John Daniels back here taking the picture. Orville Wright is up there on the plane. Wilbur Wright is up there to the right of the plane. And Willis Stowe, the Life Saving Service. Adam Etheridge, member of the Life Saving Service. Johnny Moore was a 16-year-old boy. He's the one in, the, in his bare feet. He lived his whole life on the Outer Banks as a hunting and fishing guide. And W.C. Brinkley was a lumberman from Mantio. He happened to be at the Kill Devil Hills U.S. Life Saving Station when the Wright brothers signaled the crew to come over and assist with the flyer on that historic day. Another angle here of the plane. So cool. So cool. Hannah's on the wing of the plane. You're gonna lay down, take a nap. Some other people playing on the plane. This is the Wright Brothers National Memorial. Back in 2003, they had more than 120,000 people from all over the world attended a six-day centennial celebration that included an attempt to reenact the first flight. That, I'm sure, was awesome. They also had a 25th anniversary celebration where more than 3,000 people from the area attended the laying of the cornerstone for the monument. Very cool. Okay, folks, we're going to go up to the top and check out the Wilbur and Orville Wright National Memorial. Got a little bit of a walk to go up there. All right, here's Hannah headed up the walkway. Got a long way to go to get up there. Hopefully it'll be worth it. Okay, folks, we made it up here. And a nice little surprise that we didn't even know is that you can see the ocean from up here. That is awesome. At one time you could go up to the top of this, but I'm not sure if that's open anymore. In commemoration of the conquest of the air by the brothers Wilbur and Orville Wright. And then it says conceived by genius. Achieved by dauntless resolution and unconquerable. Let's go around the other side and see what it says. You can see the sound over there. Faith. Faith. Unconquerable faith. That was really cool. What's this side up there look like? Just a pattern, I guess. All right, folks, now we're going to begin the trek down from the memorial.
That's so cool. You can see the ocean from here. And you can see the sound over that way. See some boats, vessels out on the water. Way out there, looks like a ship or something of some kind. Yep. And there goes Hannah. See the museum, the visitor center over there. Really cool. Dedication to flight. The birth of flight. Whoops, hang on, I stepped in something. Continuing our track down from the Wright Brothers Memorial. And with all the energies out ahead of us again. She's gonna fly away. Fly, see if you can fly, just jump off the hill there and see how long you go. Look back at the memorial. The sun is out, but we ain't feeling it too much today. It's kind of chilly. Cora's picking up speed. I think she must be wanting to get to the car. <laughs> All right, we're almost down to the bottom. Long walk down from up there. Corey had swordfish and Papa was still eating was some kind of steak. Is that what you had? Ribeye. Ribeye steak. Do that anymore, yeah. Very good food. Yeah. Anna had pasta. Right. One of her favorites. I'll show you what this place is like. It's a very legendary place. It's been here a very long time. It's right across from the ocean. And they have you use those presentation skills, whatever you do. Oh, yeah. It's a very, a big fish. Oh, yeah. And I just realized there's a giant swordfish right above me, right here inside the restaurant. And there's several of these around. We are right across the street from the ocean here in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, in the Outer Banks. We'll show you what the place looks like on the outside. When we were coming in, we saw okay. that it said Orville and Wil Wilbur Wright had eaten here. Or maybe just one of them. I'm not sure. But anyway, there's a picture of them behind us. We're wondering if that was taken here many years ago. Pretty cool. Okay, folks, as we head out of this restaurant, thought I would show you some of the imagery and what the inside looks like. It's a really cool nostalgic place with lots of uh, neat looking things, including the signs, the beer signs that look like highway signs. So anyway, just thought we'd share what the inside of this place looks like. So here's what it looks like as we exited the Black Pelican here in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. 
you can see the sign behind Corey. I'll go back to that in a second. That talks about that the Wright brothers were here. Pretty cool place to eat at if you ever get a chance to check it out. Pelican Black. All right, folks. Found a great weekend here. This has been our place for the weekend. Thought I'd show you one more quick video tour of our little three bedroom cottage. We had over here to the left, three bedrooms. It's a little messy right now since we just stayed here. We didn't really use this bedroom too much, but it was nice to have for storage. We had a bathroom there. Shower left a little be desired. It was really small. As you can see, there was like a shower curtain in the corner. So then we had this bedroom in here that Hannah was able to sleep in the same room as us. So that was pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed our little video from this weekend. This is our room as we're leaving. Here comes Corey walking in as we get ready to load up the van and head out. Okay, folks, we are headed out of Nags Head, driving past Jockey's Ridge, sand dunes. We got to enjoy on our trip. I think you'll be able to see it here as we go by this light up ahead. There it is, off in the distance. Such an awesome place to visit. So much sand. Hey folks, so we're getting ready to go over the bridge up here as we cross over the sound, leaving Nags Head. So I'm going to try to video that so you can see all the water and the cool bridges that we have to go over as we cross over towards Mantia. Hey folks, thought I'd show you some of the imagery here as we're heading out of Outer Banks, North Carolina, the Nags Head area. Cool things here. There's a mini golf over to the right. It's closed. Boo. Mutiny Bay Golf is closed for the season. They'll probably open up in another month. There's another mini golf up here called Jurassic Putt that is closed. <laughs> we missed so many opportunities to play mini golf, but that's okay. We're going to still play somewhere on our way back today. Alright folks, we're getting ready to go over the bridge here. We've got water on both sides of us. The Blue Star Memorial Highway. I thought I would show you what it's like as we go over this bridge. Kind of goes up a little bit. I believe there's a drawbridge. Or maybe not. I'm not sure. One of these bridges has a drawbridge. More jet ski rentals over there on the left. They're doing construction on one side of this bridge, so it's down to two lanes for the entire bridge, so that's why it seems narrow as we go across the bridge. All right, here comes the bridge.
sign there on the right, Welcome to Mantia. Some of you may not know that Andrew Griffith lived in Mantia in his later years, just before he passed away. So a lot of people know about Mantia from Andrew Griffith. Alright folks, now we're going on another bridge. This bridge is over the Croatan Sound, Virginia Dare Memorial Bridge. And this bridge is pretty long as well. You can see up ahead. We, on the way here, we came over this bridge at night and it was really dark. <laughs> we couldn't even tell we were over water at night. Just seemed like we were on any old highway. But now you can definitely see the water. And up ahead, there was a little uh, area of the bridge that goes up into the air, I think, to allow for boats to fit under the bridge. I'm not sure if there's a drawbridge up there or not, but definitely goes up in the air for a brief time. But this is officially, I think, the Croatian sound. Pretty long bridge here. Hope you're enjoying our video as we head back from the Outer Banks today. Try to. <laughs> Yeah, Hannah says, sadly, we're heading back. She said, can we stay another day, Daddy? And I said, uh, we got jobs in school to get back to, so... Unfortunately, we have to head back. Okay, folks, here's the third bridge that we're going over on the way home. This is the Alligator River that we're going over now. Our third body of water. As I said before, it's amazing how much water we have to cross to get to the Outer Banks. This is a pretty big river. <laughs> Not many rivers that are this wide. You see, it's kind of a windy day. You see some white caps out there on the water. I kind of like this bridge better because you can see the water a little better because the guardrails are that is for our safety but <laughs> I don't think many people have went through the guardrails from looking at them since they're concrete guardrails <clears throat> guardrails and there is a drawbridge this is, must be the one I was remembering because this one does not go up and over so you'll see right up ahead here a little drawbridge thankfully it doesn't look like it's going to be closed or anything for us today so we won't have any delays obviously there's not a lot of boats on the water on a chillier day here in the winter months but here's the drawbridge we have a little light to alert you when it's time to stop we'll be going over that
Check out the bear sign. I guess we should be on alert on this road. There's a warning for bears. The last road had a warning for endangered red fox. So lots of animals on this part of the state. I hope we don't see any bears. Well, I guess if we're just in our car driving, maybe yikes. we'll be okay. <laughs> Anna's like, yikes. Okay, folks, we've stopped in Rocky Mount on the way back. We're gonna try out Rocky Mount Mills Powerhouse. There's a place back here called Prime Smokehouse. Comes Corey and Hannah behind me. Yes, here's the sign pointing down to it. It looks like we go down some steps and the prime smokehouse is back here. Looks like they converted this old mill into shops and restaurants. There's what it looks like inside. Pretty neat. Prime smokehouse. Let's go check it out. Okay, folks, we're here at Prime Smokehouse and our plate just arrived. I got the brisket, mac and cheese, and yams. Corey, I hope you're hungry. She's got some good little chicken plate she's going to share with Hannah. And then Hannah's also got some ribs. Got some yummy looking corn muffins. So this should be a really good breakfast. I'm mean, sorry, not breakfast. Lunch. <laughs> So, anyway, this is a really cool looking place, y'all. Prime Smokehouse here at Rocky Mount. We've also got a view of the river outside of the water. Very cool. Okay, guys, what's the verdict? Is this place worth it? Definitely. I think it's got to be my new favorite restaurant. Your new favorite restaurant? Yes, this place was awesome. And our bill was only $55, which wasn't bad for all the food we got. It's very good food. We've got some to take home with us too, because we couldn't quite eat it all. So, looking forward to finishing that up later from this awesome place. Hope you enjoyed our sharing of this place. Cool looking water outside too. Beautiful day today. Okay, we have arrived at Galaxy Fun Park in Wake Forest, North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh. This will be the final stop of our weekend vlog. We're going to play mini golf here at the Moonwalk Mini Golf at Galaxy Fun Park. So at the end of this video will be the end of our video. So hope you enjoy this. And hey folks, today we are at Galaxy Fun Park in Wake Forest, North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh. We're gonna play the Moonwalk Mini Golf, which is a blacklight course here. This is a brand new course for us. We've never played here before. Looking forward to trying this course out. We're on a streak here, finding blacklight courses. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And uh, Hannah, what should they do if they're new to our channel? Like and subscribe. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, everyone. Let us know in the comments below what you think about this blacklight course. Should be a lot of fun. Okay, folks, this is the entrance to the Moonwalk, Moonwalk Mini Golf. That's cool to have like a movie plan and you go down this ramp to the blacklight area. Here we go. And the first hole looks like it's right here, an astronaut hole. Let's see what Hannah can do. All right, Corey's turn on number two, the space shuttle hole. 
And she got the hole in one on the space shuttle. Let's see what Daddy can do on hole number three. Oh, yeah. he got it! Hole in Good one, job, baby! Daddy. Okay, here's Corine 18. Let's see if she can get the hole in one. Hey, she got it! There's the alien! We really had a fun time at this course at Galaxy Fun Park. This is in Wake Forest, North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh, if you're familiar with Raleigh. Thanks everyone, comment below and let us know what you thought about this blacklight course. Hope to see you in the next video.